Over the course of NASCAR history, there have been multiple successful drivers, and all of them had different ways of making it to the top. Jimmy Johnson absolutely sucked in the lower series, but tore it up in the cup series and is now arguably the GOAT. Chase Elliott had a very systematic rise to the cup series and is now a champion. Kyle Larson was thrown in the deep after one Xfinity season and is now without a doubt a future Hall of Famer. Christopher Bell had a gradual and methodical rise to the Cup Series and is most likely a future champion. And right now, we are seeing Carson Hosevar being thrown to the wolves in the Cup Series with Spire. So now, why am I telling you this? Well, the point is that all of these drivers had a very different way of getting to the Cup Series, but no driver has ever had as weird of a career trajectory as John Hunter Nemechek. From racing for his dad's team to racing for a B-tier Xfinity team to driving for a bottom tier cup team and then taking a chance on himself and coming back through the ranks. So today we're going to cover the career of John Hunter Nemechek and how odd his career trajectory was. Now I'm only going to talk about his time in the top three series and not anything from K&N or ARCA or anything like that really. So to start, John Hunter is the son of former Xfinity Series champion and four-time Cup Series winner Joe Nemechek. Joe's competitive career had been over for quite some time and just devoted his older years to running a Cup, Xfinity, and truck team. So to start, we will begin in the year 2013. John Hunter made his debut at the Fall Martinsville race, driving for his dad's team in the 22 truck at the age of just 16. He would start at the day 30th but kept himself out of trouble and came home a respectable 16th place and on the lead lap. He would make another start two weeks later at Phoenix, starting a solid 19th and finishing a respectable 21st. Not bad for a 16 year old making his first starts. In 2014, John Hunter would be moved from the 22 truck to the 8 truck and would make 10 starts. Nemechek had a solid stint recording one top five and six top tens and had an average finish of 10.4 and only one DNF due to a mechanical failure and had a best finish of 5th at Loudoun. But the race that stood out the most was the race at Gateway, where Nemechek led 53 laps before getting spun and ended the race in 15th. So already, John Hunter Nemechek was showing some true promise, and in B-tier equipment too. And in the offseason, it was announced that Nemechek would run full-time in the 2015 season, as soon as he would turn 18. And now with him full-time in the truck series, who knows what he could do. John Hunter had to miss the first five out of seven races, and the two races he did participate in at Martinsville and Dover, he finished 29th and 22nd. So already after the first seven races of the season, he sat 34th in points. But at Gateway, the track where the season before he had that phenomenal race, he bounced back, and while not having as great of a showing, he still finished a very solid fourth. And this proved to be the turnaround of the season, and from race 10 at Kentucky all the way to race 15 at Canadian Tire, he had six straight top 15 finishes and included one top five and three top tens. But at race 16 in Chicagoland, something magical would happen. All day, Nemechek ran between 6th and 10th, but towards the end, the race would come down to fuel mileage. And with some luck, the leader Kyle Larson would run out of fuel with two laps to go, and John Hunter took the lead, and the rest is history. John Hunter Nemechek trying to get to his first career victory. He can coast from here, Ralph. Here he comes to the checkered flag. John Hunter Nemechek, career win number one in Chicagoland. He would get his first career win, and from this race on, he scored five top fives in the last seven races. And at the end of the season, his stats were this. In 18 starts, one win, eight top fives, 10 top tens, 61 laps led, an average finish of 9.5, only two DNFs and a 12th place points finish. And honestly, if he had taken part in those five races earlier in the season, I think he could have finished between sixth and eighth. But overall, a solid first full-time season in the truck series. In 2016, Nemechek was finally eligible for all 23 races. One thing to mention is that NASCAR introduced a ton of gimmicks this season, with the caution clock and the playoffs. Well, he started the season strong, scoring his second career win in Atlanta and then finishing second the next race at Martinsville. And after three races, he would be in the points lead. But that would be short-lived because of a wreck the next race in Kansas. 
John Hunter had a decent regular season recording one win, three top fives, and seven top tens in the first 14 races, and hovered between fifth and eighth for the regular season. But in the penultimate race of the regular season at Canadian Tire, this iconic moment would take place. Custer getting through. Here they come through turn nine. Nemechek gives him a little bump. Custer hanging on. Nemechek gets into it. John Hunter Nemechek and Cole Custer. They're rocking and spinning, coming to the line. Who is it going to be? This moment was dirty as hell, but hey, at least he got the win. But the chase would begin at New Hampshire, and Nemechek ran solid all day and finished the day in ninth. And leaving the race, he was five points above the cutoff in fourth. But after the race, he failed post race inspection and was docked 10 points and was now five points below the cutoff in seventh. At Vegas, Nemechek struggled with the handling on his truck and finished last of the chase field in 16th. It was now 15 points below the cutoff in eighth. Now all his fate rested at Talladega, but it just wasn't meant to be. I thought it was interesting. Oh, oh John Hunter Nemechek, in fact, had a problem right now. And the caution the is out, out. and John Hunter Nemechek one of our chase contenders, our championship contenders. Looks like his day coming to an end. He had an engine failure early and was eliminated from contention. So Nemechek's 2016 stat line was this. In 23 starts, two wins, five top fives, 11 top tens, one pole, 99 laps led, a 12.1 average finish, two DNFs, and an eighth place points finish. In 2017, NASCAR introduced the atrocity of stage racing. To open the season, Nemechek had five sub 20th place finishes in the first seven races, but in races eight and nine, went back to back at Gateway and Iowa. But after these wins, Nemechek was decent for the rest of the regular season, recording three top fives and four top tens, and entered the playoffs as the number three seed, and had a solid shot at the championship four. But in the playoff opener at Loudoun, he would already have trouble. He had trouble early and finished 20th, but was a manageable 7 points below the cutoff. At Las Vegas, Nemechek finished a solid 8th place, but didn't gain a lot of stage points and left 14 points below the cutoff in 8th, and seemed like a long shot to make the round of 6. But at Talladega, Nemechek did all the right things, staying out of trouble, scoring stage points, and the biggest of all, having some other playoff contenders like Kaz Garl and Chase Briscoe had trouble. And with all that, Nemechek made the round of 6 and now had a good shot at the final four. But all that hope that Nemechek had was gone in the round of six opener at Martinsville. Major development here at Martinsville, one of our championship contenders, John Hunter Nemechek, and heavy, heavy damage. Well, that's just about as hard as you can hit the wall here at Martinsville. Nemechek had an accident early and leaving Martinsville, he was 28 points below the cutoff. At Texas, Nemechek needed to have a good race and make up significant ground on the cutoff. But he would fail to do so and finish 19th and was now a whopping 39 points out. It was in a must-win situation heading into Phoenix. At Phoenix, Nemechek was right there in the mix with two laps to go, but just couldn't catch Johnny Sauter and was eliminated and would miss the final four. So in 2017, Nemechek had two wins, eight top fives, 11 top tens, 108 laps led, a 13.8 average finish, five DNFs, and once again, an eighth place points finish. In 2018, Nemechek would finally start to climb the ranks. John Hunter now had three full-time truck seasons, which is more than what most drivers spend in the series. And in fear of becoming a truck series lifer like Matt Crafton, Ben Rhodes, or Johnny Sauter, he would sign a part-time deal with Chip Ganassi in the Xfinity series, while also running an almost full schedule for his dad in the truck series. Now finally, Nemechek had an elite ride. Nothing against his dad's team, but let's be real, that was never an elite team. If anything, that was a B-tier team and it was never going to be a powerhouse like Thor Sport, GMS, or KBM. So in 2018, Nemechek made 18 starts in the truck series, and in those starts, he recorded one win at Martinsville, six top fives, 10 top tens, one pole, 286 laps led, a 14.1 average finish, and seven DNFs. Now in his first few elite starts in the Xfinity series, he seemed to be making the most of it. 
He was keeping the car out of trouble, running solid, and knocking on the door of his first win. And in his 15th start at Kansas, that door would finally open. As he enters turn number three, looking for his first ever win in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. The 21 year old from Mooresville will win at Kansas. He got his first career Xfinity win. And now there was no doubt that Nemechek had what it took to move to the Xfinity Series. Nemechek would lose out on the Ganassi ride for 2019 to Ross Chastain and among other reasons. But in 2019, Nemechek would go full time in the Xfinity Series with GMS Racing. Now, GMS Racing was not the juggernaut in Xfinity like it was in trucks. GMS only had one win that came at Talladega in 2018. GMS was more like how their current cup team was in 2023, kind of a mid-tier ride. But one thing that played to their advantage was that in 2019, the Xfinity Series was the most uncompetitive it had been in a while. So making the 12-man playoffs was not a tall task. In Nemechek's first full regular season, he was solid recording four top fives, 13 top tens, and led a total of 14 laps. Had five DNFs, and had a best finish of second at Iowa. And this was enough to qualify for the playoffs as a 12 seed. In the playoffs, to keep it short, he was severely held back by his equipment and was nowhere close to making the round of eight and was not really in the picture. So at the end of his first full-time Xfinity season, Nemechek recorded six top fives, 19 top tens, 14 laps led, a 12.5 average finish, 5 DNFs, and a solid 9th place points finish. Not bad for a B tier Xfinity ride. But sadly, at the end of 2019, GMS was shutting down their Xfinity program. And this left Nemechek without a ride for 2020. But towards the end of the 2019 season, the driver of, of the Front Row Motorsports 36 ride Matt Tift had to miss the final few races for medical reasons. And out of all the drivers they could have picked, they picked Nemechek. Nemechek started the last three races for a front row, recording finishes of the 21st, 27th, and 23rd, which isn't bad considering the circumstances. And honestly, it couldn't have been much worse than what Matt Tift was doing that year anyway. Tift, in, only, in his only cup season, had one top 10 at Daytona and only had three top 20 finishes and a 26.1 average finish and was 31st in points almost all season. Meanwhile, his teammates Michael McDowell and David Reagan combined for two top fives, two top tens, and 17 top 20s, and had an average finish of 24.6 between them. So really, anyone was an improvement over Tift. At the end of the season, Nemechek would have nowhere to go with GMS shutting down, but it was announced that Front Row would downsize back to two cars and ax the 36 car. And David Reagan would retire at the end of the season, and the 38 car would open up. John Hunter would get the call and go full-time in the Cup Series in 2020 with Front Row Motorsports. Now, John Hunter's 2020 season had very low expectations. In the first half, he was exceeding them. In the first 18 races, he had two top 10s, nine top 20s, and only one DNF, and had a standout performance at the first race back from the pandemic at Darlington where he finished ninth in a front row car. That performance was the best of the season. Now after 18 races, Nemechek sat 25th in points, and while not sounding great, that was better than what teammate Michael McDowell did last season, where he finished 26th. So Nemechek seemed to be clicking with front row, but the second half of the season was a different story. Down, Power the wall. Three, back it down. Flat left front tire on the 38. Yeah, John Hunter Nemechek, you see the yellow stripes, he is Heavily involved in the Rookie of the Year battle right now. He was running 22nd. John Hunter Nemechek, son of Joe Nemechek. Look at the side of that race car. That's a hard, hard impact right there. Uh, Tums, Steve, is that what you're looking for now with a caution, or is this pretty much cut and dried what you're going to do? Oh, John Hunter Nemechek has had a Yeah, it's been a, a bad day. Terrible day. day. So, patient behind Hamlin. Yeah, the 11 almost in oh. defense. Caution's out. And caution, this one's going into the wall. The 38 of John Hunter Nemechek, the young man from Mooresville. You saw the sparks flying before he got into the wall, but a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. Yeah, Joe's son. He was running 20th. I, uh, Matt. Nemechek only had one top 10, three top 20s, and four DNFs in the last 18 races. 
and finished the season with a 27th place points finish, while McDowell finished 23rd. And side by side, McDowell was all around better, but Nemechek didn't have that bad of a 2020 season and probably would have cracked the top 25 in points in 2021 if he decided to stay. But in the offseason, Nemechek made a very interesting move. He announced that he was moving back down to the truck series with Kyle Busch Motorsports and Toyota in the number 4 truck. Now this move puzzled many because he proved that he could hang it in the cup series and could one day be a successful driver. But instead, he chose to move back down to the truck series and honestly, I didn't blame him at the time. Front Row was a C-tier organization and wasn't going to be competing for wins anytime soon. So why would you hang around and finish 25th every week when you can easily move back down to a lower series with a high-end ride and contend for wins every week? So with that, in 2021, Nemechek would have high expectations and was a championship favorite heading into the season. In 2021, Nemechek had high expectations, and well, let's just say he didn't disappoint. But it's not going to pay off. Sean Hunter Nemechek just has to negotiate three and four. Wow, look at that drive from Kyle to try to get to the bumper in the outside, but it doesn't work. Sean Hunter Nemechek, the winner at Richmond. Under four tenths. Wow. John Hunter Nemechek is going to hold off Carson Hosevar, and Nemechek wins for the third time this season. This is a hashtag here for wins, and he has certainly done it. Romco, his sponsor with a couple of hundred employees here in the grandstands today, and they are all rooting on and cheering John Hunter Nemechek, the winner at Texas. A four-time winner this season. John Hunter Nemechek on his way to a victory at Pocono and win number five. John Hunter Nemechek does it at the Tricky Triangle. In the regular season of 2021, Nemechek had five wins, nine top fives, 12 top tens, 487 laps led, and only one DNF. Nemechek dominated the regular season and won the regular season championship. With all of his success, he was the number one seed by a country mile having 28 more playoff points than the two-seed Austin Hill. The round of 10 was a breeze for Nemechek, with finishes of 25th, 3rd, and 2nd. The round of 8 for Nemechek would not get off to a great start, with having engine troubles and then finishing 33rd. But despite that, Nemechek was still 2nd, 28 points above the cutoff. At Talladega, Nemechek kept himself out of trouble all the way until the final lap where he got wrecked for the win, but finished 4th and left Talladega 36 points above the cutoff. At the cutoff race in Martinsville, Nemechek ran well for most of the race, finishing third in stage one and second in stage two. And this basically locked him into the final four despite getting wrecked late in the race. The three drivers who would join Nemechek would be Ben Rhodes, Zane Smith, and Matt Crafton. This was probably the most stacked final four since 2016. Now all Nemechek had to do was do what he did all season, dominate. In the finale at Phoenix, Nemechek's weekend didn't get off to a good start. He qualified 16th while the other three contenders all started inside this top 10. And because of this poor qualifying effort, this brought some unfortunate circumstances to John Hunter Nemechek. Advantage over John Hunter coming in here. Oh, look at left Nemechek. side tire flat. Nemechek, significant issues already. It has gone from bad to worse for one of our championship contenders. And that's off turn four, Vince. That's a long way to go to get back to pit road. This set him back big time. Nemechek didn't even get back inside the top 10 until the last 30 laps. And with this race only having one caution in the final stage, there just wasn't any opportunity for Nemechek to even contend. And he would miss out on the title to Ben Rhodes. But one thing I want to mention about 2021 is Nemechek made five Xfinity starts for JGR and Sam Hunt Racing, scoring a win late in the year at Texas and had two top fives and three top tens. Now, while you can call 2021 a success, there was no championship for John Hunter. He missed out on a championship but had the chance to correct it in 2022. But Nemechek seemed like he was regressing. He only had one win at Darlington, which was down 80% from 2021. 
7 top 5s, which is down 23%. 11 top 10s, down 10%, and only 187 laps led, which was down 63% from 2021 and finished 3rd in the regular season standings, which isn't bad, but considerably down from 2021, and was the 4th seed and still had a shot at the championship. In the round of 10, Nemechek was solid. 10th at IRP, a 2nd at Richmond, and a statement win at Kansas, and was now seeded 3rd. At the round of 8 opener at Bristol, Nemechek had a mediocre race, finishing 12th, and was 9 points below the cutoff in 5th. At Talladega, Nemechek finished 25th, but was still within distance of 4th, and was only 5 points below in 7th. But at Homestead, Nemechek wouldn't come in clutch and had issues early on in the race, and was eliminated from championship contention. The one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that the team John Hunter drove for, KBM, was switching to Chevrolet next season due to the owner Kyle Busch switching RCR and Chevy in the Cup Series. But not to worry, because in 2023, Nemechek would return to the Xfinity Series with Joe Gibbs Racing in the 20 car, and sponsors Mobile One and Romco would both follow him to the Xfinity Series. And with all of this support, Nemechek seemed poised for a championship run in 2023. John Hunter would start the season strong with seven top tens in the opening eight races, including a win in the second race of the season at Auto Club. It was leading the standings until race 20 at Road America, where he had some issues. So to end the regular season in 26 starts, six wins, 13 top fives, 19 top tens, 915 laps led, and finished the regular season second in points, but entered the playoffs as the number one seed. In the round of 12, he breezed through with finishes of third at Bristol, a win at Texas, and an eighth at the Roval. In the round of eight, he finished second at Vegas and left 47 points above the cut line. At Miami, he finished third and left with 44 points above the cutoff and basically a lock for the final four. At Martinsville, Nemechek finished third in stage one and that would prove to be enough to lock in a spot for the final four. And the opposition he had to go up against was a soaring Sam Mayer, experienced driver Cole Custer, and veteran Justin Allgaier. At the finale, the junior motorsports teammates Allgaier and Mayer were just non-factors. And while hanging out in the top five all day, it was just so evident that they didn't have what Nemechek or Cole Custer did. So the battle was really down to two. Custer and Nemechek. Towards the end of the race though, Custer had the better car, and it was evident after Custer just passed him with 43 to go, all hopes of a title were slipping away. But with just four laps to go, Nemechek's title hopes would receive a breath of life. Most recently he said enjoy the opportunity as the caution will come out. The 78 goes around Anthony Alfredo, and so now another restart. This would bring out overtime, with Nemechek on the front row and on the bottom. All he had to do was nail the restart and he would become a champion. But not all things went his way. Custer on the outside. Five, three, Nemechek on the inside. Back to green. Great restart by the double zero on the seven. The 20. Of John Hummer, Hunter Nemechek goes so hard into turn one, he slides up the racetrack. Here comes the seven. They're three wide for the lead down the back stretch. How will they come into three? Allgaier aggressively goes into three. Custer on the inside. Here comes Sheldon Creed. White flag one more time around. Custer's pulled out to the advantage. He needs a perfect one and two. Allgaier higher, trying to keep the momentum up. Allgaier, he's getting a little pressure per second. Custer pulling away. Custer proving he deserves to be a part of NASCAR's elite. Today, Cole Custer is an Xfinity Series champion. Nemechek came up short, but had a very successful season with 7 wins, 17 top 5s, 24 top 10s, 2 poles, 1,083 laps led, and a 9.5 average finish. Definitely a championship caliber season. With all the success in the lower series that Nemechek had, he confirmed what we already knew, that he was a capable cup driver. And with Cup Series team Legacy Motor Club announcing that they would switch from Chevy to Toyota, and receive key partner treatment. And with a 42 ride opening up due to some Noah Gregson shenanigans, 
John Hunter Nemechek signed to the 42 car for Legacy Motor Club in 2024. So that brings us to today. And you may be asking, what was the point of this video? Well, I find it absolutely amazing that Nemechek went from driving B-tier equipment in the truck series to more B-tier cars in Xfinity to a mid-pack riding cup and then took a chance on himself to go back down not only to a second tier series but down to a third tier series. Won almost everything in sight in those two seasons and then got caught up to Xfinity and won more races and now is coming back to the cup series with a big question mark in 2024. And my prediction for Nemechek in 2024 is 18th in points and barely misses out on a playoff spot. Well, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And the upload schedule is going to be a little different for the next month. I'm going to upload every other week just so I have more time to make these videos. But anyway, I'll see you in two weeks for another video.